brides, grooms, we need to talk. First of all, you're getting married, congrats by the way, and you just ask that special someone in your life, that friend or relative, to officiate your wedding. Now they've never done it before, but they said yes. You walked away from that conversation feeling absolutely excited. Cloud nine, couldn't be better. This is gonna be so great, mission accomplished. They walked away from that conversation feeling very different than that. I'm Mark Allen Grolo, professional wedding officiant, course creator, and coach of officiants and celebrants all around the world. And so as someone who hears from first-time friends and relatives every single day, I know how they're feeling. And the sentiment's always the same. First of all, they feel honored that you ask them to officiate their wedding. So no worries there. But immediately behind that feeling of being honored are two other primary feelings. And that is they say, I feel scared and I feel lost. Now, I know you don't want them to feel that way. They're excited, again, they're honored, but that fear and that feeling of loss and casting about is right there as well. I don't want them to feel that way either. I love helping first-time friends and relatives. It's what I do. So how do we eliminate this disconnect, this disjointed situation of you feeling so excited, them feeling so scared and lost? Well, here's the thing. You can walk into the months leading up to your wedding knowing you didn't dump too much on your friend or relative who's officiating for the first time. And that person can walk into the months leading up to your wedding feeling appreciated and feeling like you understand exactly the magnitude of what you asked them to do for you. Here's the simple solution. Ask your friend or relative these five questions and you'll all feel great about the future. The first question you want to ask your friend or relative, that first timer, is can you please apply for a license to marry us? Now, there are essentially two kinds of weddings. There's the civil legal kind of ceremony and there is the spiritual community kind of wedding. Now when I say spiritual I don't necessarily mean religious, more on that in a second. Now of course the civil kind of ceremony, that first kind, the legal kind, has to do with signing papers and getting your marriage registered with your local governing jurisdiction, stamps, signatures, that kind of thing. The second kind of wedding is more, as we said, that spiritual community aspect where you're gathering all your people together, your besties, your family, the people who are nearest and dearest to you, they're all coming together. You have a ceremony, you have a party, you are commemorating your love, your union, and making promises in front of them. Now here's the thing, these two weddings, as it were, don't have to happen at the same time and the same place. Now, traditionally, in a lot of settings, they do. The officiant comes on site, and of course, that officiant is registered to act on behalf of the government as an agent of the state so they can legally sign papers and register the marriage and at the same time they also lead the ceremony this is what's more traditional they talk about marriage and love and facilitate the promises get up in front of everybody and of course lead the ceremony as a wedding officiant but of course sometimes these things do happen separately as well the couple goes down to the courthouse signs some papers. This happens uh, in a lot of countries as a matter of routine, and the couple doesn't want to have a quick signing of the paper courthouse wedding, so at another time, same day or later date, that's where they have that spiritual kind of community ceremony where all their people come together, have a ceremony, have a great party and a dinner and a dance, and so they happen separately. So you need to decide which context best fits your situation or your preference. If you want your friend or relative, that first timer, to be able to legally register your marriage, you need to ask them, can you please apply for a license to marry? Now, unfortunately, in some countries, that just will not be possible unless they become full-blown clergy or a lawyer or something like that. In that case, you will need to figure out how to get yourself legally married before you have the ceremony where your friend and family is not legal in any capacity and doesn't need to be. But if you need 
need them to be legal and sign some papers. For example, in the United States, it is easy for them to go online, get ordained with uh, an organization called American Marriage Ministries or something like that, pretty much legal in every state, and then they are qualified to sign papers, register your marriage with the local jurisdiction, with the local state, and it's pretty seamless. So they will need to do that. So you need to ask them, can you please apply for that license to marry? Then you'll know you have all your ducks in a row when it comes to that civil legal part of the wedding ceremony. And now they can focus as well on that community spiritual aspect of hosting a great ceremony for you and all your guests. The second question we want to ask our friend or relative who's never officiated and they're doing this for the first time is, can you make time please for a wedding rehearsal? When we ask anybody to do any task, we want to be clear on what that task entails. And so when you ask your loved one to officiate your wedding, right away, of course, they are going to focus on the script writing and the wedding day itself, everything that needs to happen to make those things come together. One of the most important tasks of officiating a wedding may not even occur to them or to you for that matter, before you watch this video. Now, as a professional wedding officiant who's officiated hundreds of weddings over my 12 year career, I insist with all my couples that we have a wedding ceremony rehearsal. Now, why is that? It's because early on when I didn't and couples opted out, too busy, etc., don't wanna bother people, I noticed that the wedding day was so much more tense. Everybody lined up at the back, the attendants, wedding parties, parents walking in, dogs, animals, kids. They were all so nervous, shifty-eyed, kept asking me questions last minute. And when I get up there, where do I stand? Where do I go again? And it just added this, this, this tension, this nerve rackness that didn't need to be there. Then I noticed, of course, when you contrast that with weddings where we got together for 40 minutes or so the day before, walked through things, talked through things, had a super fun time on the wedding day everybody felt more relaxed about how and when they're coming in in the wedding ceremony where they're standing all that good stuff it eliminates all the weird shifty eyedness and the tension and nerves at the back you want your wedding party to be excited and feeling great about what's to come and so if that's true of a professional wedding officiant who's been doing it for years and years, I do this, I teach all my members inside Unboring Wedding Academy to do this, how much more true is it for your first timer who's never done this before? A wedding rehearsal is important for the couple and for everyone coming down the aisle. But for a first timer, it is absolutely crucial to walk things through, map things out the day before we actually have the wedding. They will feel so much better as well as you and everyone else in your wedding. So when you're asking your friend or relative to officiate your wedding for the very first time, also ask them, give them a heads up, can you please make some time the day before for our wedding rehearsal? Now, right at the beginning, they might get panicked eyes and think, I don't know how to run a wedding, a wedding rehearsal. Remember, they don't know how to do much of anything at all at this point. Trust me, they will figure it out. They don't necessarily have to run the rehearsal if you have a wedding planner, but I will say at the end of the process, no one will be more qualified to run the wedding rehearsal than that friend or relative who's officiating. They are literally going to be the most qualified person on the planet because they wrote that script. They know the ins and outs of that ceremony. And if they're panicking about it, just tell them to watch my video all about how to run a wedding rehearsal in three easy parts and they will absolutely crush it. So I always recommend that the wedding officiant run the rehearsal and I always insist that you need to have a rehearsal with a first timer. Don't skip it, it'll be a great time. It'll make everybody feel better on the wedding day. Let's get to that third question you need to ask your first time friend or relative when they've agreed agreed to officiate your wedding, and that is this. Can you please give us an overview of the wedding ceremony script 
process because there is a process to crafting the wedding ceremony, walking through the weeks or months before the wedding and getting to the day itself with that perfect ceremony script. As you've gathered by now, your first timer won't know what that is at the outset. You ask them to do something they've never done before, and that's okay. That doesn't disqualify them by any means. Again, I help first timers all the time who crush it on their very first try with my training program, Unboring Wedding Academy. So I totally believe in them. By all means, they will be ready. But what you want is to be in the loop. You want to know they have a sense of the process and they have figured that out and they're letting you know those steps along the way. They don't have to be miles ahead of you. They just have to be a couple of steps ahead, keeping you in the loop, letting you know what's coming next in the process and that they have a kind of system of putting this thing together. Because it's your wedding after all, and I say this as somebody who has an emergency procrastination procrastinators coaching package people reach out to me all the time first timers the wedding is in three days and now they have all kinds of questions for me about details and logistics that they hadn't thought of yet then of course I alert them to those things and then they need to go to their couple again three to two days before the wedding and ask their couple a whole bunch of things about logistics and the script etc that they hadn't thought of that's less than ideal. Again, they can still pull it off, but you want to have a heads up in the, I'd say weeks, months before your ceremony about what is coming up. It is your ceremony, I keep stressing that. So ask your friend or relative, as you are building the script and putting things together, can you keep us in the loop and let us know what's coming next. It's, it works really great because it gives them a sense of accountability and that you want to be pulled in along the way. They're not bothering you. And it also gives you the peace of mind that yes, your loved one is working on this thing and they know what's coming. Which rolls nicely into the fourth question that you need to ask your friend or relative as you ask them to officiate your wedding. And that's this. Can we please plan the wedding ceremony together? There is a crime that too many wedding officiants, whether they're first timers or pros, commit, and that is this. First of all, they don't include something in the wedding ceremony that the couple wanted in there. That's usually a oops, I forgot. Or they include something in the wedding ceremony that the couple didn't want. And to me, that's really bad because it is your wedding ceremony again and you do not want the officiant leaving something out or putting something in and you were surprised by it, railroaded, sideswiped, you didn't see that coming, you didn't like it, you were offended by it, etc., etc. Officiants should be crafting the perfect ceremony that's exactly what you want. So how do you achieve that? You sit down and work on the ceremony together in a wedding ceremony planning session. I believe in this step so much, I wrote an entire book just on that called Wedding Zero to Ceremony Hero. It's about how the officiant can guide you, the couple, through all the elements of the wedding ceremony step by step figure out your preferences, learn what you want in there, learn what you don't want in there, and you just kind of brainstorm it through and walk it through chronologically. So for example, if step one of the 10 part traditional wedding ceremony, I have a whole video on that. If step one is the opening remarks or the officiant walks up there, looks at the guests and tells, welcomes them and says certain things, for example, about whether or not guests can take photos, well, those are the questions they need to ask you. The brides and grooms put those instructions essentially in the mouth of the wedding officiant. So please uh, don't take any photos. You know, the couple have asked that we not take photos during the ceremony, or you may take photos. And of course, turn off your, silence your devices, turn off your phones, anything that might make noise, things like that. So there's a lot involved in just that step alone. How does the officiant walk up to the front? 
Is there anybody with them when that happens? What do they say when they give those opening remarks about photos? What is the cue word that then they say or the cue line? For example, let's begin, which then cues the procession, okay? Then we're at part two of the 10 part traditional wedding ceremony, which is the processional. So there'll be questions around that. What song starts? Who's walking in first? Uh, when that person walks in or those people walk in, do they stand? Do they sit? Where do they go? Is there a second song for the marrier who's coming in? When does that change? What's the order? All that kind of thing. And you move through the entire ceremony together that way working on it together so that when you get to parts like the traditional giving away the bride, if you don't like that, you want to discuss alternatives to that. I do have a video on that, for example. So all along the way, you are going to be talking about what you want, what you don't want. And at the end of that meeting, it takes about an hour typically, and that's it. I know it sounds like a lot, but after a, a really well-discussed hour, your efficient will leave that meeting with all the information, all the data they need I, I recommend you know filling it out on a spreadsheet. Maybe they're taking notes. They have all the information to then go home and build your wedding ceremony script, which then I advise they share with you so you can see it. You can sign off on all the wording in the ceremony and not be surprised. Nothing will be left out that you wanted in and nothing will be stuffed in there that you wanted left out. It is your ceremony and this is the way to make Make sure that your perfect wedding ceremony happens. And that leads to the fifth and final question you should ask your new first timer wedding officiant, which is Can we buy you a wedding ceremony training course, please? My primary client, the person that I breathe, eat, and sleep to help is the first timer friend relative officiant who's never officiated a wedding in their life, never even thought about it. I love helping that person. As, as I said before, what they tell me when they reach out to me goes something like this. I'm super honored. I am excited, but I'm really nervous. I'm scared I'm going to mess this up for my couple. I'm lost. I don't know how to do it. Of course, I don't want to bother my couple with this. I don't want to tell them that I'm feeling bad about this and make them feel bad, but they don't know how to officiate a wedding, so I don't want to bother them. They're busy. Uh, how do I do this? I guess I'll just find... I found you, Mark, but I'll go that kind of thing. Now again, I know you don't want them to feel that way and that is where I step in. On behalf of your loved one who you asked, you need to know they are scared, they are lost, they are honored at the same time. It's a hairball of confusing feelings. But there is a simple solution and that is this. When you ask them to officiate your wedding, you can also ask them, if we purchase you an online wedding ceremony training course, can you please take that course so that you will be the very best efficient you can be? And of course, if it's Unboring Wedding Academy, one of the very best wedding officiants anyone's ever seen, even though it's their first time. I gotta say that because that is the outcome. I don't know a person alive who would say no to that. No, thank you. I don't wanna be trained by the best. I don't wanna be the best. I don't wanna do the best for you. But when you do that, when you purchase and gift a wedding ceremony training course for someone who's never done it before, they are instantly relieved. Those are the emails I get. I am so thrilled that my couple saw me. I feel seen. They invested money in me and they know that I can do this. So they are relieved. And for couples, they know, oh my gosh, I don't have to worry. We got the person that we wanted. We know they're great. We love them. They love us. That's why we asked them. And also, they are going to have the skills they need to officiate the wedding and put together a great script and be ready for everything that wedding throws at them, expected and unexpected. So it's a gift to you, to your officiant, and to all your guests when you ask them, 
can we please buy you a wedding training ceremony course? Can you get trained for the day? Because we know you can be the best. That's it. As somebody who helps first time wedding officiants every single day, I know yours is going to crush it. Ask them these five questions and they cannot fail. Thanks for watching. If this was helpful, I'd love if you liked this video. More information on my training program, Unboring Wedding Academy, is in the description below. And make sure you subscribe or pass this channel along to your officiant so they don't miss a thing all about how to officiate a wedding.